Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to another day of Lindores Abbey Rapid Challenge 2020. We have a fourth day of quarterfinals and today pairings Magnus Carlsen against Wesley So and Sergei Karyakin against Daniel Dubov. Uh, and it was very exciting to watch the uh, Russian pairing uh, games as all of them were decisive and very exciting and a lot of drama. Uh, five games, two were won by Dubov, two were won by Karyakin and we had the the, uh, Armageddon game at the end. However, Magnus Carlsen and Wesley so produce really beautiful game. So this is why I would like to show you this game today. So that was the game number three. Uh, in the first one, Magnus Carlsen won. Then we had the draw. And here, if Wesley so wanted to stay in the tournament, he really had to play good chess. And actually he did. Uh, he got in the slightly positional worst situation, but he complicated the things so much that a lot of, of things were happening on the board. This is why I would like to show you. Magnus Carlsen, rapid ranking 2881, triple world champion champion in the standard uh, time control rapid and blitz as well uh, but Wesley So who's gonna be his opponent uh, he's ranking 2741 also is the world champion but in Fisher random chess so uh, he won in the final against uh, Magnus Carlsen uh, so very interesting uh, encounter Magnus Carlsen gonna play as black and Wesley So uh, as white so without further ado Let's see what happened on the board. We have knight on f3, d5 by Magnus Carlsen, so ready opening, uh, d4, knight on f6, c4, e6, transposed to the queen's gambit declined. And here white can be very very flexible in choosing uh, how to continue knight on c3 bishop on g5 very popular move e3 also is possible queen on c2 uh, c takes on d5 is played many times bishop on f4 also uh, not so often but it's also possible but we have g3 catalan opening where bishop goes to g2 uh, the pawn on c4 is uh, sacrificed sometimes temporary uh, sometimes for good but white gonna have the very powerful a uh, bishop on the longest diagonal so we have d takes on c4 by magnus carlsen bishop on g2 and now bishop b4 bishop d2 blocking and attacking the bishop so a5 supporting the bishop and now if white of course take it then black would have very unusual pawn structure but also a very strong one as these pawns can just support each other also the rook would have the semi-open file so black would stand very very well so we have castle by white, castle by black, and now knight on a3. Very rare variation. Uh, and also, this is the only variation uh, in, the, in this opening where actually uh, white lost all the game. Lost. So uh, at least on the top level. So uh, very risky. So Magnus Carlsen, of course, takes the, the knight, sacrificing his, uh, his bishops. However, white gonna have these double pawns uh, and black gonna have very powerful four pawns on the queen side. So we have b5 by Magnus Carlsen solidifying the, the pawn structure on the queen side and asking Wesley so, okay, what do you have here? Because before rook on b1 was played with the attack on the, on the b5 and it can be easily defended. Also knight on e5 was, uh, was tried with the you know attack on the rook. However, what do you have here? These continuations are losing. What are you going to play? Uh, we have queen on b1. This is a new move in the position and this is how Wesley so uh, tries to win. Uh, and what is the idea? First is attacking b5 and after c6, which is obvious move, e4. So the queen supports e4, but also if if black just, you know, uh, develop the pieces, something like bishop on b7, then e5, knight d5 and look at this. Uh, Checkmating uh, ideas already are somewhere in the air, so uh, black have to be very careful uh, because position of black can be uh, can be attacked. For now, of course, g6 solving the problems, but keep in mind that white has dark square bishop, 
and black doesn't have dark square bishop anymore so this bishop can exploit the the dark squares that would be very dangerous so magnus carlsen of course knows all of that and he play h6 uh, eliminating the knight from jumping to g5 but wesley so is very well prepared and he play now g4 uh, threatening g5 uh, also the pawn cannot really be taken i mean it can but that would be very difficult position for black after e5 uh, h3 and the knight would be just trapped and has nowhere to go so uh, definitely not really great idea would complicate the game for black too much so we have knight on h7 now with the triple control on the on the g5 square uh, but wesley so is ready also and he play h4 now preparing g5 uh, so what magnus carlsen did he play e5 any any ideas of e5 uh, by white is are not possible now however he sacrificed this pawn uh, interesting idea actually would be after d5 but black could just play rook on e8 uh, and then not much would happen black stands really great here uh, and can defend easily uh, if c takes on d5 this would just unnecessarily complicate the game uh, and after queen on d5 this would be just crazy knight g5 you know attacking the threatening the checkmate uh, attacking the queen with the rook skewer the rook that would be just crazy after e4 there are moves like bishop on e4 the the knight is still under attack uh, the queen is still under attack the rook is still under attack queen d2 yes it can be played and after knight on h7 rook e8 trapping the the knight on h7 because uh, white probably would take the this rook for free and after bishop on g4 it's pretty complicated and black are not without the chances because this rook actually can come to attack uh, the king is very vulnerable even the knight can you know join the party uh, and join the attack over there very very easily and very fast but as i said uh, here after after d5 black simply can play rook on e8 and there are no complicated variations so we have knight on e5 simply just taking the pawn uh, we have queen on d4 now attacking the bishop and the knight so bishop f4 defending and now rook on e8 attacking the knight twice and what to play as white because this knight for example defends g4 which is under attack so that would be a very nice development by black uh, also the knight is under attack twice so can exchange you know rook for the two minor pieces uh, what to play as white queen on c1 this was played by wesley so what the move now uh, rook on e5 is not really great because white not gonna take the rook on e1 but rather play rook on d1 first uh, and now rook is under attack so white gonna win the exchange and if you want to preserve it's not really great because queen c5 rook d8 with check knight f8 have to defend win the material back and now if rook is moved then look at this black gonna lose uh, another piece and probably the game that was pretty pretty sneaky move so uh, magnus carlsen of course don't fall for that first he play queen on c5 uh, and now we have rook on d1 as planned and the position is very similar now uh, the knight cannot be taken for the all the same reason so we have knight on a6 developing the knight and now taking the knight is a serious threat so what wesley so play knight on c6 and uh, and now he complicates the things completely uh, what to play as black who calculate better would you take the the knight uh, if yes do you know what's going on so queen on c6 this was played by magnus carlsen he took uh, and now we have e5 skewering the the queen attacking the rook so rook gonna fall uh, definitely so we have queen on c5 bishop on a8 and it seems like it's a very bad idea for magnus carlsen however now we have bishop on g4 with attack on the rook and also attack on the bishop so magnus carlsen gonna get back his material what to play as white now 
Uh, Wesley saw found a very very interesting way bishop on e3 with attack on the queen and it looks like doesn't make much sense however after queen on e5 we have rook on d4 so now rook is not under attack and attacking the bishop which is undefended what a move so bishop on e3 make a way for the rook you know um to still keep the exchange up beautiful beautiful game so far so magnus defends his bishop and also uh, the white bishop is under attack we have bishop on c6 attacking the rook and now if rook goes to c8 that's just for your information it's always risky to to play this way because bishop b7 wins the piece okay uh, bishop not only attacks the rook and the and the knight but also controls this square so rook cannot help the 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 knight uh, so this is why we have bishop on e6 attacking the bishop this way and here actually Wesley so missed some very nice uh, opportunity to play queen on b2 uh, and win the pawn on b5 because the bishop cannot be taken okay if bishop is taken the problem is rook on d8 wins the queen okay queen is the undefended so after queen on e8 uh, exchanging the, the pieces uh, white of course have a very powerful uh, attack here uh, a lot of material more and gonna win the game pretty easily so uh, wesley so actually missed that he didn't play queen on b2 uh, we have bishop on g2 so very natural uh, defending position for the bishop now a light square at least are much more secure uh, we have knight on c5 so magnus carlsen brings uh, you know all the pieces um, to the attack to the center now this knight can jump to d3 uh, and here queen on b2 would be possible uh, even with the with the knight attacking uh, the queen the position of the queen because still we have this tactic uh, however that would exchange the queen so maybe um, wesley so would like to avoid that we have queen on c3 going going after a5 pawn but here magnus actually doesn't care about the pawn safety first so we have king on h7 queen on a5 so grabbing that pawn and now uh, actually magnus missed very interesting um, idea knight f on e4 with quite strong attack so for example queen b5 rook g6 and the position is a uh, very very complicated now uh, of course bishop can come to f3 to h3 um, and attack uh, on g2 so that's the first idea but also this knight can jump and join the party and queen always loses looking uh, for example but through this rook on this rook so if the rook is ever moved that uh, have to be prepared first so uh, black would have very very strong attack here however magnus uh, first want to you know set up the pieces so he moves his knight to the outpost on d3 now very powerful knight on d3 uh, and now we have rook on b1 going after the pawn on b5 uh, queen on f5 very similar idea which i show you uh, just a bit before uh, however Magnus do it a different way now as you see the rook is under attack but it doesn't matter because now rooks go to b5 attacking the queen but queen is ready queen g6 and you see already all of these ideas uh, are still on the board just with the queen not with the rook so even more dangerous uh, and now king h2 very important move uh, which actually keeps white still in the game but the position is very complicated not easy to find the move like that but after king on h2 is not really easy to find how to attack the position of the of the black king now as you see dark square bishop already is eliminated so it's not so easy uh, maybe moving the bishop maybe with some jumps with the knight uh, it's possible but king on h2 a really very important move here however we have queen on a8 a different idea defending uh, g2 so you know any ideas can be can be very safe for white uh, but also 
preparing some mating ideas on the last rank. So as you see, Wesley so goes for everything. But this is double edge position and very, very dangerous, very exciting. So what gonna happen next? Actually, Magnus Carlsen had rook on e8, simply kicking the queen away. And if white don't want to, you know, be kicked and play something like rook on b8, which looks very, very powerful, Bishop f3 solve all the black's problem here. And now queen has to go back. Otherwise we have, you know, mating ideas here. So queen on f3. Uh, black gonna win back the exchange. And now rook has the open file. Can go to b1. Uh, now knight can also jump. Control uh, h2. And very, very dangerous, uncomfortable position uh, for white. So... Uh, this rook on e8 uh, was the best uh, idea for Magnus. However, he played knight on e5. So he has a different idea. This knight now gonna jump to f3 and asking uh, Wesley, what are you gonna do then? Uh, we have rook on d8. Wesley so doesn't care. He just want to checkmate the, his opponent. And here Magnus could just go for queen on f5 and just make a space for the for the king. That would be actually the best in his position. However, he was in the mood or maybe uh, Wesley was in the time travel so couldn't calculate everything and he played knight on e8. Knight on e8 actually gave uh, Wesley so the chance uh, to continue the attack very successfully. So feel free to pause the video and find the winning move for white. I will just to give you one hint. This is the last move you would like to expect to be. So with this hint, try to find um, the, the, I think, the best continuation for white while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? I think the, the hint was very, very strong, so nobody expect that king on h1, which is actually the strongest move in the position, king on h1. And now black doesn't have any threats here anymore. So, for example, knight on f3 does nothing. Uh, and white now can take the material or checkmate the opponent. So uh, that would be... That would be really great for for white if the if black want to you know make some window for the for the king then they just gonna lose the material and uh, white gonna you know continue the attack. However, uh, this was a little trap, uh, and we have rook on e8, rook on e8, and now this actually is losing move uh, because now Magnus can finish in very very nice style. Knight on f3 was possible in. Uh, immediately however Magnus want to have the you know clear situation and first he play rook on e8 now the problem is that this rook actually on d8 still control d3 which is very important in this position and I will show you why we have queen on e8 and now knight f3 and here king f1 is not possible you know to escape this way because this is just a checkmate so that's the first moment where where white gonna have the problems uh, and if bishop on f3 then not bishop on f3 which looks very strong but it's not winning but rather bishop on d7 with the attack on the queen discovered check and that's just you know winning for black uh, and if you ask me why bishop on f3 is not so great because bishop g5 saves the day and now black has to fight for the draw really uh, because for example h takes on g5 queen e3 and what to play as black uh, if you take we, you have queen on g5 uh, and now you are in troubles you know your your eight rank is quite weak uh, queen can take also on h4 and if they exchange the, the pieces then white gonna be faster uh, with the passed pawn and the rook than, uh, than black yes black have quite advanced uh, pawn uh, but the rook can always you know stop it and uh, bishop can't really you know stop and attack the pawns and uh, that's gonna be win for white so uh, that would be very very interesting uh, however we have king on h1 the problem is king on h1 now doesn't work uh, because d3 square is weak so this is what magnus carlsen play now queen on d3 now threatening a checkmate okay this is a checkmate this knight just control all the squares uh, we're gonna have only bishop on f1 
and that's just gonna be a checkmate uh, on g1 if the kings go to g2 so uh what wesley so try is bishop on d2 hoping maybe for the knight taking but magnus just goes straight away for the checkmate queen on d2 and wesley so resigned the game so he lost the mini match uh two and a half to half um, and he got knocked out from the tournament so i will just show you the standings and other sc scores just in a while but first i would like to show you the scores and the standings just in a while but first uh, wesley so actually could try to defend a little bit longer uh for example queen on e4 with check and after f5 uh kicking the queen queen actually can retreat to the first rank so uh it's not saving the the game because magnus always have queen on f2 uh queen on h4 and you know mating is coming uh, but still queen on f1 and uh, now queen h4 bishop h3 and exchanging the queens would complicate the game because uh, because of these passed pawns uh, it's still winning for for black as this pawn gonna be faster with support of the king of the knight and the and the bishop however uh black could play bishop on h3 that would be the most precise queen is under attack so uh queen on f3 and after bishop on g4 uh winning the queen and the game and now queen against the the rook of course is winning for magnus so all of that could be played but uh, in this position uh, Wesley so actually resigned the game so here are the scores from today Magnus Carlsen as you see uh, won the second mini match and uh, advanced to the semi-finals and Daniel Dubov lost to Sergei Karyakin he won the first mini match so uh, here we go quarterfinals Hikaru Nakamura Magnus Carlsen this is already known uh, but you know the pairings uh, between Yuyangi Dingler and Daniel Dubov Sergei Karyakin uh, they still gonna play uh, and we will see um, the other pair uh, of the semi-finals just later so that's all for today uh, if you like this video press like if for some reason you don't like it press unlike and if you don't want to miss another games from this tournament uh, or other quality games just press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one